Hi gentle people, good morning, I'm Val, welcome back on 18 Squad Lab and today I'm really proud to present you the last episode of the building of this Tiger One Lit production. This episode deals with more uh, specifically the weathering process of this uh, Tiger One. Should you be interested in the building procedures and the painting procedures, those two episodes are also available on the channel. First thing first, I'd like to uh, really thank uh, all the community of the social networks, especially the community on, on Facebook, uh, where I share the pictures of this Tiger One uh, completed. Uh, I, I really want to thank you all for all the nice comments. I received hundreds and hundreds of comments. I'm really pleased, it gives me a lot of courage to continue this work and to share these techniques with you. So, let's go now with the, te the, the different techniques and first of all, generics. Okay, let's jump into business with the tracks. Painting these tracks was not an happy story. I did some uh, testing and several unsuccessful attempts prior to uh, reaching my, my goal. I will not develop all these unsuccessful attempts because it would, it would be a loss of time. So here is the way to go to, uh, to reach the final appearance of these tracks. I used a mixture of 40% uh, black 30% brown, 30% hull red to give the initial very dark appearance and slightly corroded, metal corroded uh, to my track. That's the point of departure uh, to paint uh, the tracks. To simulate the crushed bricks uh, appearance on my tracks, I create a mixture of standard rust and industrial city dirt pigments uh, mixed together with uh, PVA glue and water. I then apply this uh, mixture randomly on my tracks with a skewer stick. I then create another uh, mixture uh, did with uh, light rust and industrial city dirt and I apply this mixture as well uh, randomly on both tracks. The idea here was to create more uh, color variation as bricks might have uh, different colors. For uh, both mixtures of pigments, I used after, after application a, a flat paintbrush, quite rigid one, uh, to uh, remove the excess but also to push my mixture uh, deeper into the tracks. Quite strangely, you might think, uh, I, I repainted the tracks with the initial paint setting of uh, black and brown uh, red mixture. Uh, above uh, these pigments application and I will explain why. The use of pigments alone or even mixed here with plaster uh, didn't give me uh, the, the perfect appearance of you know a, a, a brick which is really exploding because of the, the pressure of the metal. You know these bricks were, were really crushed by the 57 tons of the tanks. So my idea here and that's why I did so many tests was to reproduce a, a well-defined appearance of, a, of an, an exploded brick. I also wanted to, to give the impression that my crushed bricks were encrusted uh, within the, the, the previously accumulated mud, actually dry mud. And that's why I further painted all these um, mixture of pigments with uh, XF52 flat earth from Tamiya diluted at 
the, the different uh, pigment mixture color were obviously subsequently hidden uh, below this XF52 color, but that's part of the plan, you will see later. Okay, that's the result, and we will now continue with a thin layer of XF57 buff, applied diluted at 60% with the same air pressure of 1 bar and the needle of 0.2. Uh, we will apply randomly a first layer of dust above uh, these two tracks. I then continue uh, by creating a uh, quite liquid mixture of pigments, Gulf War uh, sand from Migamo, diluted with a uh, PVA glue and, and water, and I speckled both tracks with this mixture. Uh, the next step was to create a wash of oil paint, a nickel mix of raw umber and lamb black, diluted with white spirit uh, and apply randomly on the tracks to create some darker spots or darker areas uh, randomly. To introduce the presence of oil leaks coming from the different road wheel uh, hubs, I used uh, the shaft and bearings grease product from AK Interactive, pure, applied with a small paintbrush and I focus this application um, on the different locations of the tracks where obviously the, the wheels were present. To let the magic operate, it was now time to uh, reintroduce our uh, pigment mixture of crushed bricks and for this I use this metal claw just to scrub all the um, little spots of uh, dry mud that were uh, previously painted uh, flat earth XF52 and that's the best way I, I, I found uh, to have this natural uh, appearance of exploded bricks um, recovering the exact texture and appearance of uh, bricks exploded by, by the weight of these tracks. Uh, these clay soil uh, pigments uh, are now embedded uh, within the, the dry mud uh, areas. To increase the harmony between all these layers, I applied a second coat of dust, a dust layer, uh, using the dust effect product from AK Interactive, I applied uh, this product pure with the airbrush. The pressure was 1.5 bars. Well, to complete this extensive work on the tracks, I told you it was not an easy, an easy task. Um, I scrubbed uh, both tracks with a sanding block. Um, all the parts of these trucks that were in contact, in direct contact with the ground, uh, the cobblestones and so on, were uh, scrubbed uh, to make uh, reappear the, the, the metal underneath uh, the paint. And that's a very big advantage of the Freel model trucks. Uh, being in metal, you, you just have to rub the paint and you recover a, a perfect metallic appearance. Well, this is the final result on, on, on these tracks. Uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty glad about the result. For me, it represents uh, tank tracks uh, in urban environments. Uh, I, I think it's pretty realistic. For the spare tracks, the concept was rather different, uh, even if the base coat was the same one. So the mixture of uh, flat black, brown and hull red was exactly the same. I continue to paint these uh, spare tracks with acrylic colors and paintbrush. Uh, the first layer was basalt grey, uh, above which I used blue grey to finally apply different other colors with different painting techniques. Uh, the technique to paint with acrylics and paintbrush is better explained in my other video how to paint rusty spare tracks um, these are the, the, the same spare tracks by the way uh, here is another uh, color version of these spare tracks using these tones of grey the first layer was basalt grey uh, applied slightly diluted with tap water to create some uh, transparency uh, here and there and afterwards uh, above this layer 
Uh, I applied the, the, the blue-gray, um, also diluted with, with tap water, and um, displacing the pigments where I wanted them to be. So, so the idea is to create a, a variety of uh, uh, track elements, each one being different of its neighbor, uh, by concentrating the, the, the light grey pigments on different parts of each track element. Uh, the next step is uh, to use uh, Panzerasis from Vallejo, old wood color, very diluted with tap water, and to apply this uh, filter here and there uh, to suggest a very thin, dry earth layer on some uh, track elements. I then use the Model Air Valero uh, 042 camouflage black-brown color uh, to suggest bare uh, corroded metal using the chipping method, uh, both with the sponge technique and with the paintbrush technique. This color was extensively used on all the different parts of the model uh, to suggest bare metal. To recreate the apparition of a slight corrosion layer uh, on the contact points between the tracks and the wheels, I used the dark rust color from AK Interactive, uh, slightly diluted also with tap water, so quite thin and transparent. Uh, and I used my paint brush uh, on, these, uh, on these areas. I also used uh, this color pure uh, with the sponge technique uh, just to uh, simulate the apparition of small uh, rust dots on the same areas. The chocolate uh, chipping tone was used to simulate with the paintbrush uh, streaks and uh, uh, scratches uh, on, the, on the tracks. Uh, this tone is a little bit less aggressive than the uh, camouflage black-brown from Vallejo. To go even deeper in detailing, I uh, use the orange-brown from AK uh, to simulate the apparition of uh, young rust in all the, 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 the track links location. Uh, you know where these axes are uh, crossing the, 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 the track elements and makes the, the, the junction between the track elements. Uh, young rust generally has a lighter color. Well, weathering of the tanks started with uh, the wheel assembly. And for this, uh, you have already seen in the previous video painting the, the, the Tiger One. Uh, that I use chipping fluid for the wheels and other parts of the, of the tank. So for these zones already treated with uh, chipping fluid to uh, make reappear uh, the, the base coat through the olive green and the, the red brown, uh, I started uh, the chipping with um, the Vallejo Model R042 camouflage black brown just to uh, show uh, the bare metal through uh, the most exposed uh, chipped areas. I used both the paintbrush and the sponge techniques. The paintbrush was used to uh, precisely uh, chip the areas uh, already uh, chipped uh, to make the base coat reappear. The sponge uh, was used uh, to increase uh, the, the chipped areas, uh, especially on the inner wheels, where obviously uh, mud, stones and debris were uh, trapped uh, in between uh, the different wheels. The next step is rather classical and consists of a pin wash. I used here uh, the dark wash product from Megamo. Um, it's necessary to emphasize all uh, the, the, the little sculpting details like the bolts and crevasses. I use this product pure, uh, applied with a paintbrush. The good thing with this product is that you can uh, apply it and leave it to dry for hours. It's still easy to remove it afterwards with white spirit, or at least remove the excess. So in this case, I apply the product on all the wheels in one bunch, uh, accelerated the drying process with an air dryer, and then remove the excess with white spirit. An important point is that whenever you remove an excess of product, um, 
you, you, whatever type of product, you have to brush in the natural direction of the flow. Um, I mean, in which direction um, would flow dirt and dust if it was raining. And you follow this direction while brushing so that naturally you will already create streaks uh, flowing in, in the good direction. To reproduce the oil leaks from different road wheel hubs, I use a mix of um, shaft and bearing grease and engine wash and turbines from AK Interactive. Uh, I mix these two products uh, with a ratio of 50-50 and applied it to the wheel with a little paintbrush. This uh, mixture uh, needs to be applied in uh, several coats, uh, at least two to three coats, um, each time accelerating the drying process with an air dryer. Whenever a mud layer is applied later on on the wheels or on the chassis, uh, I uh, reproduce these uh, oil streaks, oil leaks, uh, also above the, mud, the, the dry mud layer. It is now at this stage that I applied uh, the mud layer, but I will explain this process later on in the uh, lower hull uh, explanation, weathering explanation. You can see here the results uh, working with all these products. So the presence of uh, clay soil pigments on the main wheels, the presence of oil uh, leaks from the different uh, uh, wheels hubs, um, I enjoyed also very much working with the splatter effect dry mud from uh, AK, creating all these textures and colors uh, on the lower hull. To come back on the hull preparation, before the mud uh, application, I prepared the lower hull surfaces with some oil paints. Uh, basically some uh, raw amber, burnt sienna, burnt amber, white, uh, black lamp. Uh, all these colors have been used, uh, creating some spots here and there on the lower hull just to break the monotony of uh, the dark yellow color. And um, I also wanted to create more uh, um, <coughs> streaks and uh, create more depths uh, prior to the mud application uh, so that within the zones where the mud is not present, we have a nice background. On the vertical surfaces, uh, these spots have been washed uh, with uh, a flat brush and white spirit vertically, so that the streaks are looking natural. And on the, the horizontal surfaces, um, I used also an old uh, flat brush, but uh, I just um, hit the surface with the paintbrush head. I then add raw amber uh, pure, uh, in all crevices and around all the details to start creating uh, much more depth and also much more dirt. Uh, these streaks are um, rather strong. You, you need to uh, exaggerate a little bit the contrasts so that something stays visible at the end after the mud application. Because this mud application, even if there is almost no mud, will reduce the visibility underneath this layer. Here it is also important to work on a logical way, uh, putting more dirt uh, close to the transmission location, to uh, the suspension arms, to the tension wheel uh, location, and all these areas where dirt could be trapped. That will offer you a, a nice background prior to applying mud. Still working on the lower hull, don't forget to chip the, the different metal parts prior to applying the mud. I used the uh, Valero paint model R042, uh, camouflage black-brown. I used this paint um, with sponge or paintbrush on all the suspension arms, uh, tension wheels uh, support and transmission location. Uh, obviously, I also apply this paint um, on all the edges of the hull. I then applied a dark wash on all the details and crevasses of this lower hull with a pen brush and remove the excess with white spirit. Quite classical. The idea here is again to insist more 
on the on, on the most dirty areas like around the transmission and around the suspension arms uh, of the wheels. It's now time for a mud creation. I used the splatter effect dry mud product from uh, AK Interactive. It's a rather liquid product, so if you want to create more solid uh, mud, you need to add some uh, plaster. You then add uh, this mixture with a flat paintbrush, quite rigid, uh, in all the places you, you judge necessary. Uh, using another paintbrush with tap water, you, you can easily blend uh, the product you have already put on the, on the tank. Um, it's uh, very easy to use and the, the blending makes it much more real. You can even uh, produce some uh, nice realistic streaks uh, with this technique. After mud application, it's time to finalize the work with pigments. I use this set from uh, Aptelung 502. And to show you the differences, I applied uh, these pigments on a spare part. On the left side, you can see the dry mud pigment from Aptelung, uh, too reddish, uh, to my opinion, for this project. I only used the uh, dark earth pigments in the center, uh, here above the mud layer from the AK Interactive product and dark mud and clay soil were used occasionally uh, at some locations. The clay soil has a very nice orange uh, color that was used uh, at many places on the tanks uh, to simulate the impact of fallen bricks or crushed bricks. You can see here some examples of pigments used, clay soil here, dark uh, earth, and uh, splatter effect dry mud and plaster, of course. Uh, I apply these pigments pure uh, with a, a paintbrush. The size of the paintbrush depends mainly on the precision you need. Uh, I apply these pigments um, quite logically. Uh, the dark earth was used where uh, the accumulation of mud uh, was more important, just to create a kind of depth. This suggests that at these locations uh, mud is still wet or that uh, an oil uh, patch or a, a grease patch is hidden uh, below this uh, mud layer. So after application of the pigment I just put a little bit of white spirit uh, to fix uh, the pigments. I also brush the pigments with white spirit to, uh, to blend them with the surroundings. And then I accelerate the drying process with the air dryer. Uh, that, that, that permits to reveal if it's necessary or not to add some more pigments or uh, if I can continue uh, to other locations. Uh, these pigments from uh, Aptailung 502 are really out outstanding. They really stick to the, um, to the surfaces. Um, their density is very, very nice. Um, and I think the, the, the colors are uh, really realistic. After application of the dark earth pigment uh, from Aptelung, I continue here and there with uh, clay soil pigments, just as I mentioned to, uh, to suggest the presence of uh, crushed bricks uh, or bricks that impact some parts of the hull. After mud and pigments application, it's time to apply uh, our mixture of engine wash and a shaft grease. We will apply this greasy mixture around the transmission uh, support but as well at the point of contact of the three last torsion bar with the suspension arm. Why? Because these were the zones uh, closest to the engine bay and as you know uh, the engines are losing oil and these are the points of exit where this oil uh, can appear. I also apply this greasy mixture around the tension wheel supports. Uh, as I explained initially with the wheels, uh, you need from time to time to apply two or three uh, different layers uh, to increase the density of the product. Uh, obviously, you apply uh, more layers in the areas where the leaks is also supposed to be uh, the more important. I also speckled the lower hull sides with this greasy mixture using my airbrush 
and the air pressure around two bars. This completes the work on the lower hull and we can now start with the lateral sides of the tank. Given the lateral sides of the hull were not treated with the chipping fluid as explained in my previous painting video, it was necessary to create a random chipping uh, to reproduce the apparition of uh, the base coat, the dark yellow base coat, uh, through a uh, damaged area. I used a 50-50 mix of Falero paint, uh, Iraqi sand and all wood to reproduce these scratched areas. This was done on all the lateral sides uh, of the hull, uh, including of course the front and uh, back side. The next logical step was to create uh, the same chipping with a darker color, which will be of course camouflage black-brown, uh, to simulate deeper scratches. Watch out here not to apply uh, this color on the Zimrit, um, because this color is supposed to uh, simulate the apparition of bare metal, but given of course the presence of the Zimrit layer, a bare metal is not visible. It's only visible, of course, where the Zimrit layer is not present. Uh, the rear side of the hull received a thin layer of XF1, Tamiya XF1 diluted at 70%. Uh, this coat was applied uh, in the vicinity of the exhaust pipes. I also applied this coat on the uh, upper hull in the same location but also above the different engine uh, ventilation bays where um, you know a lot of dust and, and dirt uh, is flowing uh, due to the presence of the different radiators. The next uh, chronological step and logical step is to apply a dark wash on uh, these sides. Um, I applied obviously this wash on all the crevasses and sculpted details of the, of the model. I did the choice uh, not to apply this product pure on the Zimrit crevasses, just to avoid darken too much my, my, my tank. So what I did uh, was to dilute this product with white spirit and only apply this diluted washes on the lower part of, of, the, of the hull uh, covered with Zimrit, these parts uh, which are more prone to accumulate uh, dirt. I further continued with other products, um, adding uh, streaks on the vertical panels. I use for uh, this purpose the AK Interactive products like uh, streaking grimes and uh, dust effect. Uh, these two products were uh, quite liquid and um, applied with a small paintbrush. Watch out here. Do not overload your paintbrush with these products. Um, it's best to, to work with uh, a small amount of uh, paint at a time uh, just to avoid that these liquid uh, products uh, do not flow into all the, the Zimrit crevices and expand through the, the, to the panels. Uh, the rear uh, panel of the hull required some extra work uh, due to its specific configuration. So I started with a 50-50 mix of uh, oil paints uh, raw amber and burnt amber. Um, I applied this, uh, this mix of all paints pure and without removing the linseed oil present in the paint. Uh, most of the time when I work uh, with oil paints, uh, I do not put my paint on a sheet of paper to remove this oil, uh, unless the tube is, is new and uh, the paint is too liquid. The reason is that uh, this oil greatly helps to blend the pigment on, on the surface. Removing the linseed oil uh, will turn your paint really dry and more difficult to, to spread across the surfaces. Um, personally, I never experienced any shiny result after drying time because of the linseed oil. Of course, if the, the, the paint is, is really uh, loaded with, with oil, it's best to remove the excess. Uh, just like on the front plate, I use streaking grime uh, to simulate the, the dirt uh, streaks on the vertical surfaces and on the mud guard. I then add some black smoke pigments around the exhaust pipe's uh, exits and fix them uh, with white spirit. 
All the lateral panels of the hull receive also a treatment with black pencil to reproduce the polished steel areas. So these, all these areas where uh, there is a, a, a constant friction. It's only at this stage that I glued the two exhaust pipes and uh, exhaust pipe uh, covers. I will explain later on how uh, I painted these uh, exhaust pipes. Prior to put the, the big exhaust cover on the left side, I had to paint the tow hook uh, located on the, on the rear panel. And this uh, painting procedure was used as well for the tow hook which is located on the uh, uh, top side of the hull. For this I used two oil paints which uh, are Terra Rosa and Burnt Sienna. Uh, and as you can see, for, for, for this operation, I had to remove a little bit the linseed oil, uh, especially in the tube of Terra Rosa that was quite recent and, and was quite liquid. But even uh, like this, I did not wait for a long time. Um, I don't like when my oil paints are too, too dry. The painting technique here is quite easy. I apply first uh, burnt sienna, uh, just um, hitting the, the paintbrush head on, on the surface, uh, creating some, some spots of, of paint. And afterwards, I did the same with uh, terra rosa uh, above the first paint. I then use another uh, dry paintbrush, an old one, and I, I just hit the surface um, with the paintbrush head to mix uh, both colors together. Uh, the large exhaust cover can be uh, then put in place on the left side with a bit of uh, cyanoglue. The lateral panel of the hull, uh, where the side skirts have been removed for operational uh, reason, whatever, uh, receive a special painting with oil paints as well. Don't forget to apply this masking tape on your hands and fingers a few times prior to applying it on the, on the model. It reduces its adherence and uh, as such avoid dramatic problem when, uh, once you will uh, remove it. Uh, it will avoid uh, to uh, tear off the, the, the paint or the stencils uh, which are uh, lying underneath. I used a mix of lamb black and raw umber pure without removing the linseed oil uh, to make uh, dirty uh, these areas below the side skirts where uh, dirt could accumulate. We have here to take into account the different uh, support of these side skirts um, and, but as well uh, the attach point of uh, these side skirts uh, on the hull. Normally, removing the, the masking tape should not be a problem if its adherence uh, had been reduced initially. And we can finally uh, complete the work on uh, the hull lateral sides by applying uh, mud, pigments and oil leaks exactly uh, the same way we did for the lower hull. Logically, we will apply much more mud uh, on the side where the the rear mudguard was uh, torn off um, and on the zone where the side skirts uh, have been uh, removed. A splatter effect dry mud product from AK is originally uh, produced to be speckled onto a surface and that's also uh, what I did here on, on the hull sides. Uh, I used the, this product pure and I speckled it uh, from a bottom to top uh, to give more texture on, on, on the tank. The pigment used and the oil uh, product were the same as for the lower hull. Uh, the way to apply it was exactly the same uh, and I followed the same logical way uh, to create more depth and uh, more realism. The exhaust pipes and uh, exhaust cover painting follow a rather easy process. Uh, the exhaust pipes were initially uh, primed with Mr. Mahogany Surfacer 1000, which has a dark brown color, and the lower part of the exhaust pipes were uh, painted dark yellow, as explained in the previous video. I applied a first layer of camouflage black brown from Valero to get an even darker brown uh, color on the, the upper part of the exhaust pipe. 
I also uh, paint a small ring of brown, dark brown around the uh, exit from the engine bay where the, the heat was most probably more important. I also apply this dark brown color on the upper part of the exhaust cover and on the inside of this exhaust cover. The rest of the job was done with, a, with the sponge technique using a two paint from AK Interactive. Dark Rust and Hull Red. These two paints were applied in sequence with the sponge uh, on the zones uh, previously painted with the camouflage black-brown color. It was also necessary from time to time to uh, add uh, a little layer of uh, camouflage black-brown with the sponge just to help the, the blending between all these colors. I, I kept a little bit of uh, the base coat, dark yellow, especially on, on the top cover of the, the exhaust pipe, but as well uh, on the bottom part uh, of this uh, exhaust pipe. Here is the final result of uh, this painting with the sponge technique and these uh, acrylic colors. To complete the work on the exhaust pipes, I apply a thin layer of XF1 uh, flat black from Tamiya, diluted at 70% um, at the extremities of the exhaust pipes. I apply the same a thin layer of black on the uh, extreme upper part of the exhaust cover. This very transparent uh, black layer is useful uh, as a base coat for further application of uh, black smoke pigments uh, on the same areas. A first layer uh, was applied and fixed with white spirit and I further apply a second layer uh, without any white spirit just to create more texture. So nothing complicated so far and I think for me the result is rather uh, realistic. Well guys, last but not least, the hull upper deck work. Uh, here there is quite a lot of uh, work as well. Fortunately we already discussed together the main basic steps of weathering and they won't be different for uh, this area. Uh, given we already uh, chipped the upper surface with chipping fluid as explained in the previous video, uh, we uh, can here work immediately with the first layer of chipping using the camouflage black-brown uh, color from uh, Valero uh, to simulate the, the, the deepest uh, scratches. Uh, the use of the paintbrush here is a bit more necessary just because the sponge is not able to reach all the little uh, enclosed areas. The upper deck is uh, a zone where the crew is um, transiting a lot um, the, it's the area where they are walking from left to right, from front to back, uh, where uh, they are uh, performing maintenance actions. And so, um, to my opinion, that was an area that required more scratch effects, especially with this black-brown color. So I insisted a lot uh, around the hatches, around the tools, uh, the, the clamps, uh, the, the tow cables, um, these areas are ob obviously uh, much more worn out than the, the, the flanks of the tank, for example. The second logical step was obviously uh, the dark uh, pin wash uh, using the dark wash from uh, Migamo. We apply this mixture in all the little details as usual, uh, sculpted details, bolts, weld beads, uh, crevices, um, whatever the lines and we try to be generous here because this section is quite dirty. The hull turret junction is also quite a dirty place uh, that's a corner where a lot of dirt can accumulate and uh, to emphasize this uh, I used the raw amber oil paint applied pure and uh, with a flat paintbrush uh, afterward blend it with a, another paintbrush uh, full of white spirit. The same oil paint was used in other areas, uh, in, in little corners where uh, dirt could uh, accumulate. Uh, as I mentioned, I applied this oil paint without removing the uh, linseed oil, just to facilitate the blending of the pigments uh, with the lower surface. The zones around the, the hatches are uh, obviously much more dirty uh, just because the, that's where the crew uh, is entering and leaving the combat, uh, the combat compartment uh, with their boots full of, of mud. 
so uh, I insisted a bit more on, on these zones. I also reinforced uh, the contrast between the hull and the thread by applying a, another layer of lamb black oil paint uh, in the area of the hull turret junction. With regards to all the, the tools on the upper deck, uh, they were painted with acrylic color as explained in the previous video, painting the Tiger One. And what I did to improve the realism and the weathering of these tools was to add raw amber oil paint on the extremities of the handles, most probably in these areas where uh, the user is uh, putting his uh, dirty hands. Uh, to create more color variation, the, the wire cutter receive uh, two or three uh, filters uh, done with a burnt senna oil paint uh, just to give a more orange look to, to the handles. I use the air dryer in between each layer to accelerate the process and I emphasize the, the, the filter uh, on, on the extremities of the handles. The, the center part was um, also cleaned a little bit more with white spirit uh, just to emphasize the more uh, worn-out zones uh, of this tool. The main gun barrel cleaning bars located on both sides of the hull received some spots of uh, lamb black oil paints just because the, the cleaning process of the main gun was a very dirty task. Uh, this task was accomplished by uh, uh, a few crews working with gloves or bare hands and these bars were full of cleaning product, most probably uh, cleaning oil, mixed with uh, gunshot powder. The shovel extremity also received a little bit of mud uh, using the uh, splatter effect dry mud from AK Interactive. A mix of flat brown and flat red was used uh, to give a more reddish appearance to my uh, shell impact where the Zimrit um, detached from the tank surface. It's nice to know that given its stickiness, uh, the Zimrit has the tendency to tear off uh, the dioxide red primer that was uh, lying underneath, leaving as such uh, the, 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 the bare metal visible. So the idea is to reproduce this fact, uh, painting first uh, the, the, these areas with uh, this mix of uh, flat red and flat brown and then using uh, the camouflage black-brown color again um, above this oxide red primer uh, to simulate the apparition of uh, the bare metal. I finally used a black pencil on all the shell impact to reproduce the, the steel appearance. After application of uh, bricks, debris, rubbles and uh, gravel on the front right side of the tank to simulate the impact against a wall during urban operation, uh, by the way, it's a process that I will describe in my next video, um, I apply some pigments, uh, industrial city dirts, uh, brick dust and light dust just to improve the fusion of the, all these elements with the rest of the tank hull. My next video will be fully dedicated to brick creation and explain in detail the whole process. I also use Aptalum clay soil pigments as usual to simulate the debris of uh, crushed bricks. Uh, it's important with a pigments application in this case to go uh, in all places where uh, the debris could have fallen. So in this case uh, it was important to apply some pigments as well in between the main hull and the transmission support, but as well uh, on the side skirts and behind the spare tracks. Above these uh, pigments, uh, and to increase even more uh, the, the harmony of all these textures and colors, I apply a final dust layer using the uh, dust effect product from AK Interactive. Uh, I use my airbrush with an air pressure of 1.5 bars and the product was diluted at 60% with white spirit. Watch out with this product, it has a very light color, it's, it, it's rather white in fact, uh, so you have to dilute it to apply it and remove the excess with a paintbrush uh, with a little bit of uh, white spirit uh, to reach the, the, the right dust effect. Uh, apply pure uh, with too much product 
uh, it could give a strange sensation and uh, you, you might turn out with a complete white tank. You can see at the back side of the hull some 88 mm uh, empty shell cases. Um, I will explain in the, in the next video how I painted these, these uh, uh, empty shell cases. I wanted to keep this video within the quite decent duration limits. Well, to complete this huge work on this Tiger One hull, I applied uh, fuel residues in the vicinity of the two front fuel filler caps using the fuel stains from AK Interactive. We can easily imagine that, that during wartime, uh, refueling ops are a sensitive operation uh, during which the crew and the tank are really vulnerable. So these operations are conducted on a hasty way and obviously there should have been from time to time some uh, fuel overspill uh, on the um, hull upper deck. I also applied a few oil spots on the, the rear side of the hull just to recall the different uh, maintenance operations that have occurred prior to the, the combat operation. The final touch was a black pencil application uh, on all the metal parts that could have been used more uh, intensively uh, on the, the, the metal ridges, on the, around the hatches, on some tools. This reinforced the heavy steel texture of the tank. Okay chaps, a few explanations now on the turret work or she will be jealous. Um, here this chapter will be shorter as most of the techniques uh, used here are the same as the ones used on the tiger hull. So uh, I will mainly focus my explanation on the different aspects. The first step was uh, the dark yellow chipping on the side of the hull with the same mixture of old wood and Iraqi sand 50-50 applied with a paintbrush. The top thread was not done that way given it was chipped already during the painting process with chipping fluid. Immediately after uh, this chipping with uh, dark yellow, I started deeper uh, scratches with the camouflage black brown from Valero. Use the paintbrush to apply this, uh, th these scratches with precision on the previous dark yellow scratches and the sponge for uh, larger areas. I insisted much more on the first part of the gun and on the top side of the thread uh, where the, the crew uh, walked much more regularly. I left three spare tracks painted with camouflage on the left side, um, just to suggest that these spare tracks had been painted uh, together with the thread uh, while the camouflage had been applied by the crew. Uh, the two remaining spare tracks on the left and the two other ones on the right were painted with acrylics uh, according to the uh, technique explained uh, for the spare tracks of the hull. I also apply on the guiding tees of the spare tracks an intense uh, chipping with camouflage black-brown and a bit of black pencil as to my opinion uh, these guiding tees could have been used as stairs by the crew to climb onto the thread. So I wanted a little bit uh, more worn out aspects on these areas. This little hole on top of the thread was in fact a self-defense system. Um, this tube was capable uh, to launch smoke gran, uh, smoke signal gran, uh, flare, but as well anti-personal explosive uh, ammunition. So I painted uh, black with intense black AK Interactive and afterwards I applied some gun metal pigment inside of it. The Rommel kist, which is the toolbox at the backside of the thread, was exclusively painted with oil colors. Um, I use a mix of uh, different oils colors, uh, apply the, the spot method just like I did on the lower hull, and then blended all these colors with a flat paintbrush and white spirits. The color used were titanium white, raw umber, yellow ochre, cobalt blue and lamb black. These colors have been blended vertically on the sides of the, of the box. 
I insist it with uh, raw amber around the lockers of this box as these are the zones where uh, dirty fingers had to go to open the box. The exact same procedure was applied on top of the raw milk yeasts, so a mix of the same oil paints, uh, insisting with raw amber in the zones where uh, dirty hands could have been placed more regularly, and uh, finally, application of black pencil on the corners uh, of the raw milk yeasts where uh, most common friction uh, occurred. The next step was application of a dark wash on all the details. Uh, I also used the same dark wash from Megamo uh, for the, the thread. I applied this mixture on all the details, but as well on the lowest part uh, of the thread. So I do not apply this product on all the Zimrit, um, just not to darken too much uh, the, the, the tank turret. But anyway, I applied it a little bit diluted on the lowest uh, part of the thread where uh, dirt accumulation was most probably more important. Uh, the area in between the gun mantlet and the thread was treated again with oil. Um, I did a mix 50-50 uh, of raw myrrh and a black lamp. Uh, I love this combination giving the impression of a, a, a greasy area, greasy area and dirty area. Um, so I applied this mixture pure, again without removing the linseed oil and blend it uh, with a flat paint, paintbrush, slightly humidified with white spirit. I further continued applying oil paint. Uh, I used raw umber uh, only uh, inside the muzzle brake of the main barrel. I also applied this raw umber paint uh, at the very beginning of the second section of the, of the gun, uh, precisely where uh, the gun is uh, moving backwards inside the first uh, section due to the recoil action. The weathering process of the thread continued with the application of uh, dirt streaks uh, over the thread and uh, the barrel. I used the streaking grime product from AK Interactive, applied pure with a paintbrush, I then dried it with an air dryer and blend it afterwards with a flat paintbrush humidified with white spirit. I also applied these dirt streaks uh, around the, the periscope armor plates of the, the tank commander cupola, but uh, as well on the sides of the thread. A proper blending with white spirit is obviously uh, very, very important and you can brush from down to up or up to down, there is no importance. Okay, we are almost there, this tank is almost finished. I applied a thin coat of uh, dust effect from AK Interactive with my airbrush, uh, diluted at 60%, just like for the hull. Uh, caution not to apply too much of this product, which is really a light color, really white, and remove the excess with a uh, paintbrush, uh, humidified with white spirit, trying to uh, create some uh, vertical streaks of dust. For the horizontal surfaces, just hit the surface with your uh, paintbrush, humidified with white spirit, to remove uh, the, the excess of uh, product and uh, try to, to leave the maximum concentration of dust around the hatches and the corners. Watch out with the Zimrit, not to work with too much liquid, uh, just to avoid that the, the product flows through all the crevices of the Zimrit. Final touch on the thread, application of black pencil. Just like for the hull, apply this black pencil on uh, the zone of more intense traffic or where uh, metal uh, pieces uh, were in contact and steel was uh, visible. The very last work on this tank, I promise, uh, is the application of pigments. I did a 50-50 mix of uh, beach sand and lye dust, and I also put some uh, industrial city dirt. Um, I wait specifically the end of the thread work uh, to be able to judge where uh, it was best to apply these pigments. I think it's important to have a global view of the finished tank to apply these pigments, these final pigments, just to work on a, a very uh, harmonious way. 
so these pigments were applied uh, on the uh, hull upper deck but as well on the on the thread at key locations to reinforce the presence of dust uh, and debris uh, all over the tank. Uh, th this is specifically important in uh, urban combat as there is a lot of uh, dust flying uh, when you know the, the shells are hitting the, 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 the different houses and obstacles. Well guys, that's it. I hope you liked this tutorial. I see you next time in my next video and we will see how to create bricks at this scale. Greetings from Portugal. Ciao.